Hey hackers, Blue Cosmo from CCS here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about a zero day that I discovered. Yes, I discovered a zero day. Super cool. I'm going to do a whole deep dive into it. Uh, this video does include recordings from me about like three weeks ago. So um, it's going to kind of just go back and forth. Uh, so real quick, what is a zero day? Right. Well, a zero day is basically, let me zoom in here. Yeah, there you go. Zero day vulnerability, right? It's basically a security hole, um, but the developer is not aware about it, right? So the developer who created the software has no idea there's a vulnerability about it, or has no idea there's a vulnerability within the software. What makes it so dangerous is that because they don't know it's there, they can't patch it because they don't know it exists, right? So what makes it dangerous is that a hacker who has this has unbeknown access to whatever system, whether it's remote access, whether it's remote code execution, whether it's some sort of bypass, which is this payload or this exploit is a bypass. Um, whatever it may be, that's what makes it dangerous because they can't replace or they can't fix it. Um, so this zero day is based off of a public data leak uh, vulnerability that existed within Wix's framework. Wix is a website building service. It's the service that Cosmodium is hosted on, Saints is hosted on, plenty of other websites are hosted on the service and they don't, are, and yeah, and all these websites are vulnerable to this vulnerability, right? Super cool, enough talking. Let me actually show you guys the vulnerability. Yeah, peace. All right, so we're going to hop over to my screen so I actually can like help you guys understand where we're going to be looking at in the first place. Right? So this is RSS. Um, let me zoom in. There you go. So RSS is basically the resource description framework site summary, also known as really simple syndication. Uh, basically, it's like a markup language, but for data, it's pretty simple. If you've learned things like HTML before, you are will be familiar with the format of a markup language, right? Uh, but basically what RSS allows us to do or allows different companies to do is let's say, take YouTube, for example. Now, I'm not sure if YouTube does use R or actually, yeah, no, YouTube does use XML. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how what YouTube's doing here with this YouTube page, right, is that they don't have a separate channel page for every single content creator on the platform. That'd be way too many pages. That'd be like millions of pages. And even higher is that like if they wanted to change something about this page, they would have to change it on every single creator if each creator had their own specific individual page. So what YouTube did was they used something called dynamic pages. Now dynamic pages basically take in data from this RSS data that we're kind of looking at and plug it into it. So it says, hey, okay, they're looking for the Cosmodium CS guy. Cool, let's get his uh, banner. Let's get his profile picture. Let's get his subscriber count. Let's get his videos to throw in here. Let's get his pinned video up here. And yeah, and then let's go to Ryan's world. Yeah, one of the greatest YouTube channels on the you know platform. They do the same thing. They're like, hey, they're looking for Ryan's world. Let's uh, let's put his banner up here. Let's put his pinned video. Let's get his subscriber count. Um, yeah, his videos, right? But this is the same exact pages. Like these are the same exact pages. Uh, the only difference between them is the data that's being shown, right? So what YouTube's doing is they're showing the exact same page. It's just pulling in data from this XML document. How I actually found this exploit or, or this um, vulnerability that I'm going to show you guys um, was basically I was trying to build a Discord bot, right? If you guys are part of the Discord server, join link is in the description. Um, you guys get notified every time I post a video and basically, you know, I upload a video. I think me six just says, hey, Cosmo posted a new video. Check it out. Something like that. I wanted to do that before the blog where the Cosmodium CS blog. So I wanted to say, hey, every time I upload a video or upload a new blog post, I want you guys to be notified when it comes out. And I already have something similar to this on my actual GitHub. So on my GitHub, you guys can see that yeah, they right here. There's a new articles uh, section. And these articles are updated every time I upload a new video. So when I upload a new video, it automatically gets replaced in like with the new latest video in this ballot right here. So I was like, I want to make a Discord bot for the Discord server that does this. So this feature on the GitHub uh, that shows the blog posts uses XML, right? Uh, you can actually see the original repository that I used to actually incorporate all this, right? Um, this is some guy, it just shows you how to do exactly what I'm showing you. See the little latest blog post? Yeah. 
Um, if you guys want to do this, I can actually put this in the description if you guys want to add this your, um, your kid up or anything like that. But this uses XML. We can actually see um, them show you uh, implementation on how to get different XML feeds from different websites so that way you can incorporate it. So that way, let's say, hey, if you have a WordPress blog, I want to have um, the WordPress blog contents be shown on my website. There you go. This is how you get it, right? So I did my research on how to get the ones from the actual Wix website, right? First of all, we can see with a quick web laser check, you can see that they are running Wix. Um, yeah, so we already know it's vulnerable, right? At the time, we didn't even know there was a vulnerability, right? We just wanted to grab the blog feed, um, the XML. So we can do the tech blog feed, that XML. And that's the location of the blog feeds, right? So you just go to whatever page has all the articles or whatever their blog is, go to the blog feed, the XML, we can hit enter and we can actually see the XML data of all of the blogs on the website, right? You can actually download um, this data as well. And that's what we're actually going to do. So we do download it. Um, what I'll show you guys is the original XML data right here. Um, yeah, and actually show you guys some cool stuff, right? At the top are the namespaces, right? So you see the XML and S content and the XL, XML and S D, uh, DC. So that's XML namespace. Um, these namespaces are pretty important when it comes to some of the other content, right? So each of these articles are separated with a item tag, right? So there's an item tag that separates all of these. So you can see there's an item tag and then in between these item tags are the rest of the articles. So in between this item tag is things like the title, the description, um, the link of the actual article, the globally unique identifier, um, what category it belongs to, the date it was published, um, the actual thumbnail that sh is shown on the article itself. So you can see the first item right here is um, this first article, right? There's the title and then you see Unimod. If I go down here, you'll see title and the balloon and then down here, you'll see USB drive. And if I go back to the website, you'll see Unimod, the balloon, USB drive, right? So it's all these articles. And then you can see the namespace right here. So the uh, XML namespace DC and the XML namespace uh, content, which we saw right here, right? DC and content. You'll even get um, the creator of it and the encoded content. And the encoded content is in HTML. So you can get the entire article. I'm like, okay, this is super cool. So you guys may be wondering, all right, well, if this is just like public data, like what's the fault or what's the fault in, uh, I guess, in security? Well, it hit me when I saw that you were able to see blog content. I was like, wait a second. I have blogs that are exclusive to happy hackers, right? If I go over here and I open this in a new tab right here, this article right here, is uh it's exclusive like there's a paywall right here i can't read the rest of this article because i'm not a happy hacker member if i even click on the little button it's going to say hey join the happy hacker program it's only a dollar a month join it um but <laughs> you'll see like i can't do anything right because it's here but when i parse through the xml i realize hey what article is this one making bad usbs better if i search for making bad USBs better, you'll notice that right past the paywall, yeah, and then you'll see the rest of the article going down. And I was like, wait a second, why is this data being leaked in the XML? Yeah, so apparently the way Wix had their XML structured was not in any way ideal because you could bypass the paywall with the XML data. And they had no idea about this, hence the zero day exploit, right? Or zero day vulnerability. So I was like, huh, could I use Python to parse through this data, get specific pieces of information, and especially that encoded content and rewrite that encoded content as HTML. But yeah, this is the original script, right? Created by me, of course, right? And basically what we're doing is um, we're getting the URL of the blog, right? So the URL of the blog typically ends with slash blog, it can be slash articles, it can be slash whatever, right? Um, but the actual XML data belongs to a slash blog feed XML path right after the URL of the blog, right? So it'd be slash blog slash blog feed. The reason I have this is so that way you can enter any Wix blog 
uh, URL. And yes, this doesn't only make my website vulnerable, um, but yeah, every Wix website that has a blog is vulnerable to this. Um, the vulnerabilities already been reported, they patched it. But at the time, every single Wix site that had a blog was vulnerable to this. And I'll show you how kind of crazy you can kind of get with this type of thing, right? Uh, yeah, so anyway, you, you parse in your URL, it would basically get the actual domain name, so the whatever the example is, without the .com, uh, as a file name, and then create that as a output.xml file, right? Um, then we have all these XM directory stuff, but basically here's where the cool stuff happens, right? First of all, we're getting that data. We open up that URL that we're given slash the blog feed XML. We read the XML data and write it as XML and save it to this XML directory right here, right? Um, after that, we can parse through the data. After this, we iterate through each of the item tags, right? So remember how earlier I was showing how if we control F for the item tags, right? Each of these um, articles are separated with the item tags, right? And all the data for each article was, is within those item tags, right? The title, the description, all the other stuff. So what we do is by iterating through each title and parsing that data, we can get all that specific information. So we can get the title of the article, we can get the description, the link, the graphic, uh, globally, used, free, globally unique identifier, <laughs> the published date, the thumbnail, the creator, the content of the actual article too. Um, and then we can actually just write um, all of that content to an HTML file in this articles directory we've made, right? So um, yeah, let's actually test it. Um, Python 3 and then wix.py, right? It's going to ask us for the link. Slash blog. And there you go. So now you'll see, hey, this is the entire blog right here. Like if I go back to the um, blog, right? You see Unimod the balloon USB drive busted secret watch. You see Unimod the balloon USB drive busted secret watch. Um, and it just goes down, right? This, these are the articles from the Cosmo UCS website. So we actually wrote all those to HTML, right? You can see it's writing this article to HTML. And you can see that it listed, it said, hey, the XML saved as Cosmo UCS to XML. And the articles are saved as that um, articles slash Cosmo UCS and then all those HTML files. So we can go ahead and open this whole thing up in Kaja. I'll go to the articles Cosmo UCS and boom, you can see all the articles that our zero day was able to grab. Not only that, but if we actually check out the um, articles, right? Like if I go over here and we go back to uh, making bad US use batteries, there's clearly a paywall right here. But if I go to the um, output of our zero day, we can actually go to the making bad US use batter and you can see we can bypass that paywall, right? You can see over here beforehand, there is the paywall here. But with this, we're able to bypass it with that um, data leak of the XML. So it's actually really cool. Hi hackers, so that's gonna be it for this video. Um, there is more to this vulnerability, however. Uh, this is not the only thing this thing affects. Wix did fix this vulnerability, so I did put out this video. Um, but this does affect other websites. Now, if you do want me to make more videos off of the zero day, how it works and how what other websites it can affect, let me know in the comment below. Just put a thumbs up, something just so you know, or so I know you guys are interested in this type of thing. Uh, I'll probably post it anyway, but I would like to see some engagement from y'all. So anyways, appreciate y'all, love y'all, and stay happy, stay positive, and as always, happy hacking. Hey hackers, Blue Cosmo from CCS here, and I wanted to introduce you guys to the Happy Hacker Site Plan. The Happy Hacker Site Plan is a plan where you guys can support us for only $1 a month. That's right, $1. With this comes exclusive benefits like courses, articles, videos, and access to our entire cybersecurity knowledge base. Um, if this interests you and you guys want to um, get access to all this, check out the link in the description. It's only $1, so we definitely appreciate your guys' support. Um, anyway, enjoy the video and uh, happy hacking.